Welcome, welcome, Aprava. It's nice to see you here from India. All right. If you're just joining us, I'm asking everybody to throw um, in the chat where they're from and what they want to study or what, what job they would love to have, uh, what industry um, that they would love to negotiate their salary in. So, so glad you guys are here. All right, we got some tech consulting. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Oh, Haley is, yes, technology consulting. Welcome, Haley. And Haley's our awesome intern helping out here on the call. So, so glad to hear. Katie, finishing up master's in higher ed. Fantastic. Right, student affairs. We're going to get started here in maybe one more minute. See, there's a few more people coming in here. So I want to give them an opportunity to get settled. Welcome to everybody again. We are talking about salary negotiation. So good to see everybody. Hi, Sherry. Um, so good to see you. So if you're just joining us, I was asking people to write in the chat where you're from and what, um, what industry you're looking to sort of negotiate your, your salary in, or if you're, if you're just new, um, what kind of jobs or um, companies you'd love to work with. Thank you so much. All right, graphic design. We've got a great scope of, of um, industries here. So welcome, art teacher, Nelson, instructional systems technology. Awesome, congratulations to recently being admitted to your PhD program, fantastic. All right, more graphic design. Well, I am so glad that you are all here today. I see it's about four after, so I feel like that that's probably enough grace time for us to go ahead and get started. But again, I just wanted to introduce myself. I am Rachel Gerber. I am um, one of the associate directors of specific populations at the Career Development Center. And um, I am here to uh, present to you the AAUW Smart Start Workshop, which is about salary negotiation and how can we show up best to ask for the salary that we feel um, equates to, to the job that we're doing and that we feel um, really solid and confident moving forward physically. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen here and just get some tech stuff set up. Um, making sure Haley, uh, you can see my screen, right? Awesome, sounds great. Um, and again, I also wanted to introduce Haley Sellorn, um, who is our CWIT intern. She's gonna be helping manage the chat. So if at any point you all have any questions, feel free to put that in there and Haley can interrupt me. Um, if I don't happen to see that. And we're also gonna be doing some breakout rooms. So just to let you know what to expect. But again, welcome to the American Association of University Women, or sometimes um, it's probably most well-known as the AAUW uh, Start Smart Workshop, which is preparing you with the information and strategies you need to negotiate a salary that feels of value to you. The AAUW believes that um, pay equity and pay opportunity are a really a matter of simple fairness. And it is a leader in the fight to end pay discrimination and open doors for women in the workplace. So like, again, I said, I'm Rachel Gerber with the Career Development Center here at, on campus, on the Bloomington campus at IU. And I'm gonna be your field guide and your facilitator today. So I'm so glad you're here to take this time out of your busy schedules and that you chose to attend this workshop out of all of the other amazing choices that you might have had here today to choose from with the CWIT Summit this month. So um, as we get started, I want you to, I want to know how you feel about salary negotiation, okay, as we get started. Like, in particular, what emotions arise within you as you think about this topic, okay? Um, write them in the chat. And I'll give you a few minutes to see, see them rolling in and see what pops up here. Um, when you think about negotiating a salary, what sort of, yeah, what, what's, what do you think about? Oh, we got the first one in here. All right, what do we see here? Intimidating, absolutely, yes. What else? Something you've never done before, it's new, exact, exactly. Especially, you know, if you're just coming in into something new out of college um, or undergrad, never done it. Sometimes it can be like, where do I even start, right? Yeah, 
Anybody else? Give you a few more minutes here, a few more seconds. But those are some great ones. And I think that those, you know, intimidating, feeling anxious, um, you know, just not knowledgeable, um, wondering about, you know, how in the world, feeling like you're walking on eggshells, nerve wracking, absolutely. You know, all of those things, you're just kind of like, what can I say? What can I say? Am I, is this going to make me like, are they not going to give me the job if I say the wrong thing? So many different things. Um, and, you know, landing a job and being offered a financial package for our work is often a highly charged emotional journey. Yet it's one of the most prime opportunities that we have, especially as women, to advocate for ourselves, setting us up not just for current financial success, but also greater fiscal impact throughout the whole of your career, right? Because generally speaking, um, our salaries tend to increase over time. So if we can start as a baseline, at a higher place, that's only going to give us further, quote unquote, buying power, right, as we continue to um, get older. So this workshop is designed to empower you to successfully and confidently negotiate your salary and benefits to make sure that your compensation is aligned with your worth and your market value, okay? And it's my hope that you will leave this webinar feeling more confident in having the tools and resources of being an objective, persuasive, and strategic negotiator, okay? So that's the plan for today. All right, but first, to accomplish these goals, I wanna set some like, some general expectations and guidelines, right, for our time here together. Um, especially with this being presented online, the distractions, my friends, are real, okay? I'm with you on that one. So I invite you to close out your email to your social media accounts, put your phones away, right, to be live to this presentation. Uh, we've got a lot of content to cover in a short amount of time. And I hope that you will be active participants and, and listeners. Um, so use that chat, use you know, your little emojis to affirm others or share your perspectives, just to be you. Um, your viewpoint is valuable in helping you and our, us as your fellow participants here leave with newfound perspectives. So acknowledging your social and your cultural experiences and the differences that might exist among us is totally fine. But this is a confidential space, okay? So talking about your value and worth and money oftentimes bring up those strong emotions, struggles, anxieties. So what's shared here today, I ask that we hold um, one another kindly and in confidence, okay? So this workshop is organized really into four steps. Number one, know your value and how to articulate it, okay? <laughs> Number two, we're gonna talk about know your target salary range and benefits, okay? And that's, we're gonna be using objective research and data. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you some websites, show you how to actually do that. The third thing we're gonna do is to know your strategy, okay? And how to be persuasive with it. And the fourth point that we're gonna do is practice, 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 okay? Remember those breakout rooms I talked to you about? We're gonna practice things uh, because, not, because with practice, you become a better negotiator. Um, there's one thing just to sort of work things out in your brain. There's another thing to actually like speak it out with somebody else in front of you, okay? So this is where we're going today, the four steps of salary negotiation. All right. But first, I really want to set the stage about why this conversation is important, okay? And it's something called the gender pay gap and how it affects you. It's important to understand this gap um, and how salary negotiation actually plays a role in your career. So this gender pay gap is generally how we describe the inequality and in what men and women are paid nationally, okay? The, the pay gap affects women from all different backgrounds at all different ages and at all different levels of educational achievement. Although, you know, earnings and the gap vary depending on a woman's individual situation. However, Nationally, women are paid 80 cents to every dollar that men are paid. Now that's among people who work full-time, okay? But here, women of color are disproportionately affected by the pay gap. Now this is compared with white men, okay? Doing similar jobs. Hispanic and Latina women are only paid 54 cents on the dollar. African-American women are paid only 60, 63 cents on the dollar. White women are paid 79 cents on the dollar. Asian American women are paid 87 cents on the dollar. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander women are paid only at 59 cents on the dollar. 
and American Indian or Alaska Native women are paid at 57 cents on the dollar. Those are some big numbers, right? That, that the gender pay gap also you know, exists for women compared to, to men of the same race and ethnicity. So even within that particular cultural expression, cultural group, there still is a pay gap that's happening. Um, you know, and the gender pay gap also affects other groups as well. This is just what the AAUW highlighted here, including mothers and the LGBTQ community. Um, and there's some other information that the AAUW has on their website um, in a publication that's called The Simple Truth that you can, that you can look at. Um, just Google that on your own time to read more about that. But as we think about these things, what do you think is a contributor to this gender pay gap? Do you have any ideas? If you do, throw this in the chat. What do you think is actually like sort of contributing to sort of this, this expanse that we're seeing um, between what a man is paid for the same type of work that a woman is paid for? Any ideas? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Put your answers in the chat. Got a couple coming in here. Yeah, misogyny. Women's devalued labor in both private and public spaces. Absolutely. We're talking, yeah, we are taught not to talk about salaries at work with others, right? Yeah. Amount of people in the roles, lack of allies, information. Absolutely. That goes along with, you know, not talking about it. Amount of people in roles, um, racial stereotypes. Absolutely. No awareness among these groups. Yeah, absolutely. Those are some great answers. The AUW talks about here that um, here's some of their the causes, you know, of this this incredible phenomena that they're that they're recognizing, and you guys named um, touched on absolutely some of these, that that pay gap, right? Despite the fact that women have made enormous gains in educational attainment and labor force involvement in the past few decades. Um, gains that have helped to close this wage gap over time, still unequal pay remains persuasive because we said it, women are paid less for the same work, okay? Women um, are paid less for the same work in, in some cases as a direct result of discrimination. Um, that pay gap also reflects an undervaluing, like we, we talked about before, of women's work. Frequently women earn less than men for performing work of equal value. Um, jobs requiring similar skills, qualifications, or experience tend to be poorly paid and undervalued when they're dominated by women rather than men. Um, women are overrepresented in some low wage jobs and underrepresented in the high paid, right, in the high wage ones. Um, you know, this results in segregation in the labor market, right? On one hand, women and men often predominate in different sectors. And on one hand, within the same sector or even company, women predominate in the lower valued or lower paid occupations, whereas in women are underrepresented in managerial and senior positions, which can contribute to that, that widening pay gap. Um, women's work, such as in healthcare, education, public administration, is devalued because women perform it, right? Um, other things as women, because they're often caregivers, are discriminated against and face barriers that often result in lower pay. So, you know, women are expected to reduce their working hours or exit the labor market to carry out children or elderly care. Women are also generally historically expected to shoulder more of a, of a burden in the balance of home and private life. The spent, you know, domestic responsibilities are still not equally shared oftentimes among women and men. And the task of looking after dependent family members is largely still borne by women. So consequence. So consequently, women can have more career interruptions or work shorter hours than men. But even if women aren't caregivers, they can still face discrimination if it's assumed they might become caregivers in the future, okay? So the struggle's real, right? There's definitely um, lots of different factors for this, this phenomena, but this is a huge, this, the, real, the reality of this gender pay gap impacts us because the, the gender pay gaps begins to affect women right out of college, right? So I'm so glad that you all are, are on this call, right? Because on the basis of today's national pay gap, the National Women's Law Center determined that over a 40-year career, 
women could lose, um, white women could lose, well, women in general could lose $418,800 compared with men, right? African-American women lose $840,040 over the course of a 40 year career compared to those with white men. And, Lat and Latinas lose over $1 million over the course of a 40 year career compared to with white men. Those are sobering numbers. Um, on average, women employed full-time in the United States lose a combined total of more than $840 billion each year due to this pay gap. You know, these lost wages mean that women and their families have less money to support themselves, save and invest for the future, and spend on goods and services, you know, on their families, businesses. And, um, you know, we all, we all suffer. The economy suffers. Everybody suffers because of this pay gap. And over the long term, this pay gap also means having less money for food and housing, childcare, retirement, paying off student loans and other debt, um, and just quality of life items, right? Like homes, cars, travel, cell phones, um, all those things. So it's a real, it's a real loss. Now, we've already talked about how negotiations um, can oftentimes, you know, make us feel anxious. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pose this question here and I'm going to ask you to think about it here. Um, what do you see as your biggest challenge in negotiating your salary and benefits? Um, so for instance, what's the why behind those emotions? You know what I mean? Um, why is that? Why, why do you think, you know, why do we feel like this in the first place, right? Why do, why does negotiation and, you know, negotiating your salary and benefits feel like a big, feel like a big thing? Any thoughts? Remember one of the comments, I think it was Nelson said, it feels like you're walking on eggshells, right? But why is that? I'll give you a few examples here that I've come up with. Some of it is maybe, you know, afraid of confrontation. Absolutely, thank you, Katie, for putting that in. As a woman, yes, Sherry, feeling that your actions are scrutinized more than a man. Absolutely. It's hard to make the ask. Absolutely, Victoria. It is, is uncomfortable. Sometimes we fear, right? Getting fired or losing a job offer or a promotion. Are we being too pushy, right? Yeah, ex ex exactly, Caitlin. Don't want my supervisors to see me as needy or greedy, even if it's valid, right? Yeah, getting that reputation for not being a team player, for feeling like you're being disliked um, or fearing that employers will assume you have um, sometimes in other ways, you know, they assume that you have child care plans or responsibilities that that's going to affect your commitment, you know, to being able to really be, be the employee that they want. No experience, age, absolutely. And so sometimes, you know, there's, there's some real reasons here why we feel like negotiating or asking for, um, for more during this critical period when we're being offered a job and haven't yet quite signed on that dotted line, that sort of raises again, those, those feelings of anxiety. It's completely appropriate for these, you know, these reasons why. So hopefully the skills that you learned today, you are gonna feel prepared to negotiate objectively and confidently and to be positioned for success because that is um, what we're all about here. But I thought it was really helpful that we set the stage to understand sort of the bigger why behind this conversation, right? So let's just jump in. Negotiation, all right? Step number one, know your value, right? The first step in preparing to negotiate is to know your value. And I should have said this before. If you have um, something to like take jots and notes down, do that. Um, grab some paper, grab a pen. You might want to um, write some notes down here about this. Um, so negotiating your, your value, or in other words, can you confidently and articulately um, share the value that you bring, right? Or the contribution that you can make to your position and make it resonate with your employer, right? So how do we actually do that? As you begin your career, you might not think that you bring a lot to the table, right? I heard that some of that, um, that thread in the chat a little bit in terms of like, well, I'm just kind of getting started. You know, I don't really know, you know, I don't have that much experience coming into it. So like, what can I really like, <laughs> I don't really have too much leverage here, right? 
But as you begin, you, you might not think you bring a lot to the table, but what employers are actually looking for are your transferable skills, right, that you bring, such as good communication, problem solving, and teamwork, okay? You already have experiences that speak to what an employer is looking for, even if you haven't held that job before or a particular job before or any job before, right? So I want you to take some time right now on that piece of paper, and I want you to take some time to identify and articulate and articulate your accomplishments or your skills or your work experiences and how they demonstrate value or bring value to a company or organization. Okay, so it's kind of like like going through your resume a little bit, thinking about like you know what are some of those what are those some of those transferable skills that I have right now? You know, this is critical not only for successful career exploration, but also you know like I said before for the creation of convincing those resume those convincing resumes and cover letters, right? Um, so so take a few minutes here. Um, this is just solo work at your desk or wherever you're at, and write down some of those examples of your accomplishments, your contributions, your skills, your work experiences that demonstrate your value. I'm gonna give you some time um, here to think about that. So take maybe just like 30 seconds here um, to consider, yeah, what do you bring to the table right now? All right, I'm sure that that was like not nearly enough time, right? Um, and, and I know you're not done, but I want you to take that one thing that you wrote down and I want you to think about, um, you know, what role did you play? You know, um, what were some of those positive results that, that you drew forth from that experience? Um, and if you're able to quantify things, that's even better when you're talking about articulating your value, right? So this, uh, this slide sort of is a, is a bit of a template to help you to get started if, you're, if you, know, you need a little bit of um, extra support in articulating your value. Um, like as a result of my effort to do blank, right? I have achieved X, Y, and Z, which provided the following specific benefits to the company and then talk about you know, what you did. So for instance, one example that I came up with, um, I have a podcast with the Career Development Center called Major Choices. So look it up wherever you listen to podcasts, like and subscribe it. But um, as a result, this is, this is my value statement. As a result of producing and creating a podcast for our office, I have achieved a more expansive scope of reaching students with career information utilizing cutting edge technology and relevant means of communication, which has resulted in creating over 4,500 additional touch points for our students this year alone. Okay, so that's one way that I can articulate the value, the unique value, the unique add-in that I bring to my current position with the Career Development Center. Okay, so, Haley, I want you to get some breakout rooms, um, sort of getting set up here. Um, and I'm gonna, Haley is actually, but we're gonna put you into some breakout rooms to literally state your statements, your value statements out loud to one another, okay? Now, granted, I know this is gonna be uncomfortable, uh, but part of becoming confident salary negotiators is that we must be able to advocate for ourselves and to share the value that we bring to our organizations, okay? So this means you've got to state your strengths and your skills, and you've got to know how to articulate them out loud to somebody else, okay? So it's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be pretty necessarily, but I want you to at least try, give it an attempt, okay? So we're just gonna be in there for just a couple of minutes, two minutes. So take um, one minute for one person, then switch and share your value statement, and we'll bring you back in a jiffy, okay? They should be open now for everyone to be able to join them. Thank you.
see if anybody's going on. <laughs> Guess there's two people, room two and three, that haven't joined. I can move people to rooms. Oh, wait, there's oh, someone. There you go. To make sure, like, no one's alone. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes can you, just... you can like move people to rooms, but it doesn't. I'm not sure if I'm able to do that right now. Yeah. Because they just have to like accept it on their screen. Gotcha. She just came in. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. And so when I say close all rooms, does it give you like a minute? Is it 45 seconds? Yeah, it'll be like 60 seconds. Okay, okay. Cool. And then if you want to send a message, it's just that broadcast message to all like on the breakout rooms. Perfect. I'll do that next time. Am I making sense? Does this all make sense? Yeah, it's good. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, I wanna close all rooms. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. They have 60 seconds. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know why it brought me back into the main room. Oh, you're fine. Yo, welcome, welcome. Yeah, you're totally fine. I, um, if you click that back, I, I put on the away message. So we're all oh. supposed to come back here anyhow. So you're, we're good. Okay. <laughs> were you able to have it? Did you have a chance to talk with somebody in your, in your breakout room? Um, we really didn't get to chat a ton, but, um, yeah, I, I think it was just like a little hard with the breakout rooms and stuff. Okay. Okay. But I'm glad we're back. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, welcome back. Let me get everybody else back here. Let's see here. All right, well, as you're coming back, how did that feel? How did that feel to, to talk with somebody else about the value that you bring to, um, yeah, whatever skill sets you have? Um, does anybody want to throw that in the chat? I think people are being vulnerable and letting us know. How did that, if our, how did that feel to sort of speak your your value to someone else? Probably something you didn't actually know. Any anybody want to share? I, I didn't have enough time, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. I was getting getting chatty, you know, and it's always yeah. good to learn about you know others because sometimes it's a mirror on yeah. your own skills, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah, well, his hair is looking bad here. Hair, no makeup is just not a good effort for my skill sets to take <laughs> <laughs> with that homework. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, thank you. But yeah, we'll definitely give you some more. Um, it's always hard to know exactly how how long to keep you in the breakout rooms, but we'll we'll give you some more opportunities to share this. But thanks for participating. Anyone else want to share? A little odd at first, but it was nice to remember that the tasks I do every day provide value to my professional goals. Absolutely, thank you, Caitlin, for, for sharing that. Um, yeah, it does feel sort of odd sometimes at first because 
I don't know about you, but sometimes, especially for girls, you know, we're like, you know, don't get, don't put your head up too high. You know what I mean? Like sort of be humble. Um, it's kind of feels weird and awkward. And like, we're kind of bragging on ourselves. Well, if there's any time to brag on yourself, it's in a job interview and in a salary negotiation, right? Because you're bringing the whole of who you are and um, sort of what, what you can add to this company. So this is the time to toot your horn. So it does take some practice, but you definitely can get more, um, more comfortable in time. Because like I said here, you are your own brand, right? And you should feel comfortable talking about your accomplishment because no one else is going to be a better advocate for you than you, right? And so I want to challenge you when you're back at home, repeat this until you have developed um, a list of value statements of what you do bring and feel more comfortable in talking about it and articulating it to somebody else, right? So next we're going to talk about, we need to learn how to connect our values to what employers want, okay? And um, way, some ways that we do that is, you know, looking at your resume, that's one way to do it. And to review it, to actually see, you know, what did you actually run in your resume? That's a great place to start when talking about like, what kind of things do you contribute or what are your own add-ins um, that you can raise to quote unquote, make your case for asking for a higher salary, right? For negotiating for more. Um, you wanna highlight about the values that you add, those transferable skill sets that you already possess that will, you will be an asset wherever you go, okay? So that was step one. Step two in the negotiation process is to know your salary target and benefits, okay? So step two is really about how to ground yourself in objective research to determine how much you're worth, okay? Now, your worth is actually an infinite value, okay? There is nothing that can put a dollar amount on who you are, okay? But um, the sort of the market value of your skill sets is what we're really talking about here. So um, whatever comparably qualified and comparably placed people in your field are worth is about where your target salary is, okay? Doesn't matter how much you made at your first job, doesn't matter what your last salary was, you have a market value of the skill sets you're bringing in to the particular industry, okay? Um, you are worth whatever other people with your same background, credentials, schooling, skills, zip code are being paid to do for the job, okay? So we recommend um, these six steps to know your target salary and benefits. So we're gonna walk through these a little bit. Number one, you gotta research and identify a comparable job title. And I'm gonna talk about how you actually do that here in a second. The second thing, you wanna find in the salary range and establish your own target salary that you wanna go for. The third thing is you wanna identify what that salary range is. The fourth thing is to create a realistic budget, your own personal budget, right? So you know how much you can stretch or lag. Um, the fifth one is to determine your resistance or your walk away point, which means it's too low, can't do that. You gotta find something else. And six, to determine the value of your benefits, those benefit packages that sometimes we don't think about, right? When it comes to salary negotiation. So let's jump into that first step number one. Um, you got to research and find a comparable and job um, and aligned job title. Okay, so you should use multiple sources for your research. This is where research comes in, right? And salary.com is an awesome place to begin. Um, we really like salary.com because it uses employer reported data instead of just individually reported data right? Where people are just sort of saying that <laughs> this is what I make, you know, which might be inflated. Um, but once you're on salary.com, you can input a job title or a keyword and a location to search for positions within an industry that you're, that you're interested in, or that would be comparable for you. Um, and so that can be very helpful. Other sources of objective market-based salary are payscale.com, maybe you've heard of that, or the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, but definitely want to want to look for industry specific compensation surveys. Okay, once those are going to give you more objective data. But for today's workshop, um, I pulled this title, uh, Public Relations Specialist One, um, as appropriate as sort of a, an appropriate job title for us to use today. Now you might need to play around with some of these job titles, right? Because even from company to company, people call things differently, right? Um, what is it like at Subway Sandwich Artist, you know? 
you know, so like there's different titles, there's different um, things. So you might need to just um, play around with some different keywords um, to find things out, but read the job descriptions, right? Read the requirements and the responsibilities to make sure you're landing on something that feels pretty tailor-made to what you're actually looking for, okay? Um, because you need to find a closest match to the position that matches yours that's connecting with your skill sets, with your areas of responsibility, okay? So the second step then is once you've sort of have identified on salary.com that particular job title that's right for you, uh, find the salary range and establish your target salary. So with our selected job title, we can determine the target salary, like I said, on that salary.com's data. And the target salary, just as a reminder, is that salary that we want to achieve through our negotiation. This is our target. This is our desired salary that we're going for, okay? And we use data to understand what is actually appropriate for us to like sort of be shooting for. So when we use the salary data, um, a bell curve is gonna appear on salary.com of the range of salaries, okay? So this is just a little screenshot about the public relations specialist of what you'll see. The graph shows how many people receive a particular salary. The median or that mean point is the salary that most people are paid in this position, okay? And as you go further out from the point, fewer people receive the salaries on both sides of the median, right? So we've got like the 25% up to the 75%, and um, then the average is right there in the middle. So we want you to pay attention to that midpoint. This midpoint represents the salary for who an employee um, is fully qualified to hold this position and who requires minimal or no training. Right. So this is like an entry level position, like something that you would probably be if you're just coming out of college, um, moving into your first job would be prepared for. OK. Um, now, meanwhile, employers almost always create a budgeted salary range based on the midpoint. OK. But an employer can also choose to lead, lag or match the market when it comes to compensation. So knowing this, we can set a target salary for ourselves. Again, your chosen target salary is a personal choice, okay? But since we know that, but since we know what your potential employer is thinking, we can establish an appropriate objective research-based target salary. This isn't just like going with your gut or feeling like, eh, whatever. You know, you're kind of coming up with numbers about what you feel like you're worth. This is actually, you know, objective research-based salary targeting. Um, so you'll see here the lag. If you, if you look at the median salary, right here at that 49,000 mark in the top of the bell curve, the lag would be down to around that 25% mark, which is 44,000. So somebody, you know, that's a company that in, that's um, in that particular area that is sort of maybe a little offering less is gonna be shooting around that number. But a company that's leading might be even stretched up to about 58,000, okay? Uh, almost, almost 59. So, so that's going to be really helpful for you to find that range that feels comfortable for you. And it's important for you to check in with yourself too. Um, because if you feel like, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're not comfortable with the numbers that you're creating, um, that's going to cause problems down the road, right? Of feeling burnt out, feeling overworked, or even if you feel like, oh my gosh, they're paying me too much. You might put too much pressure on yourself too. Um, so it's really important to sort of set an appropriate range that also feels good to you. So if we are qualified for the position, um, we could set our target salary at or just above the midpoint. Because like I said before, that midpoint salary, that medium salary is the place where there's no expected like extras, okay? Like this is just the job. Um, that's in essence, that starting, that starting salary. Um, so this is where your value becomes your guide, right? The more qualified you are, you might be able to sort of stretch that further and ask for a higher target salary starting point, right? But keep in mind that the employer probably has a salary range that they also have to work between, right? Um, if you're also fully qualified for the position, you can set, like I said before, that target salary near the midpoint, and you also have room to increase your target salary but it's going to depend on sort of those extra add-ins, those extra values that you're bringing to the company. Okay, does that make sense? So step number three here is identifying your target salary range. And I'll come back to that bell curve here in a second. Um, and when you're ready to share your 
desired salary in a negotiation. Studies suggest that you're going to be more successful if you put a target salary at, at your target salary at the bottom of your range instead of asking for it outright. Okay, so it's important to be a little bit flexible, give them a range to work with versus just coming in and saying one particular number. Okay, um, again, that salary.com, that bell curve could help us set sort of that target. Um, but we want to be able to offer a range. Okay, so to create your ta target salary range, you want to put your target salary as the anchor or the bottom of that range and then stretch it upward, but never more than really 20% up. Okay, um, a smaller range um, moving forward might be more appropriate, especially if it's like your first uh, first career or your first job in your career. So knowing this, then, you know, looking here at this bell curve, um, what would you ask for? Right. Where would you anchor your salary or your target rate and then stretch it up? So just to sort of help you think through this here again, you're going to go to salary.com. You're going to find your key, your keyword, your job title. You're gonna see what the median salary is, and then you're gonna use that if you wanna start there, right? Um, as, as your bottom number, and then you're gonna stretch it forward, but no more than 20%. And you're gonna offer that as your salary range for your employer in the negotiation. Does that make sense? You're gonna be thrilled if you get that anchor number, which is that median, right? because that's your target salary and you're offering that as the bottom number. So there's only, there's only room to move forward in that. So for instance, we would suggest a target salary of $50,000, right? And so an appropriate range that you might say to an employer is, you know, I'm looking for um, a, this position uh, or something, you know, between 50,000 to 55,000, right? Which is maybe a 10% range, um, range forward. Um, again, as long as it doesn't sort of stretch above 20%, um, that's a smaller, you know, a smaller target range is also acceptable between 10 and 20% moving forward. Does that make sense? So that's one way that you can kind of create um, your target salary range as you start the negotiation. Okay. But now we're going to move on to step number four to create a realistic budget, because it's important to know your monthly budget while preparing to negotiate, because creating your personal budgets, is not just essential for your financial health, just in general but it's important to determine your bottom line in your job, right? About what you're willing to work for or not. Um, some of us haven't ever made a budget or haven't budgeted in a while or aren't great at keeping a budget, um, but I'm gonna share some guidelines for creating a smart, healthy budget. And you can find budgeting resources and financial literacy tools online. We also here at IU have Money Smarts, which is an awesome um, office that you can get some additional help with. But your budget should be based on the city where you're going to be living and what salary you expect to receive. Okay, so you'll find some of those numbers on that salary.com, right? But a popular budgeting guideline is a 50, 20, 30 rule. What I mean by that is applying this rule, 50% of your income or less, okay, should go towards paying the absolute necessities for life. Those are housing, food, transportation, utilities, um, those things that you got to get right in life. The next 20% or um, of your take-home pay should be directed towards your financial goals or obligations. So that could be retirement, emergency savings, towards debt reduction, such as your student loans or credit card debt, right? Budgeting for this category helps to put you in the future in better financial position, okay? And the last 30% of your income is for flexible spending or personal choices. So this is really your discretionary money, like shopping, eating out, personal care, hobbies, entertainment, all those kind of fun things, right? So this 50, 20, 30 rule is meant to be flexible based on your particular situation and needs. It's a guideline to help you have a, proportion, a proportionately just healthy budget. And again, you might find your percentages are fluctuating slightly differently based on the cost of living in your particular area or where you're gonna be moving um, to. Now, now here's the thing, like <laughs> understanding our budget is, is key and critical because we're gonna talk about like, how do you then set that resistance point for where you're actually gonna be walking away? So, but you first have to understand your own personal budget, your own personal needs, because every single person is slightly different, right? There's no hard or fast rule for this 50, 20, 30. It's really what makes sense to you in your particular situation but this is just a, um, 
a, a good solid um, guideline to use. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes here to jot down some numbers based on your own situation um, to create your own 50, 20, 30 rule, okay? So if you sort of can think about this, sort of do a little mini simulation yourself, um, jot down some numbers about, um, you know, what makes sense to you. And I'll give you, give you maybe a minute to do that and then we'll move on. All right, all right. So now that you sort of have some numbers sketched out, right? It's important to create and know your budget for the salary negotiation. Because like I said before, it gives you a solid informational base in which to determine your resistance or your walkway point, right? That final number is what, is what you're gonna wanna keep in mind when negotiating um, of what's going to feel too low because it's not going to help anyone if you take a job that you literally can't afford, right? Um, so you got to know your resistance point, which is the lowest salary you are willing to accept and still take that job offer. Identifying your resistance point helps you prevent, it really helps prevent you from accepting an offer that you might later regret. And so without knowing your budget, with, you won't understand your resistance point and you won't also know when to push back in the negotiation, right? Your resistance point can be informed by your budget and your personal situation. But again, um, provided that you're qualified for the job, you might again, want to start at the median um, and not at that resistance point, right? Because you wanna set yourself up for success you don't want to anchor your salary at your resistance point, right? You want to anchor your salary at the target range and stretch forward, knowing that sometimes in particular company situations, there may might not even be able to offer that median point. So you want to definitely have a, some knowledge base about where that resistance point is in case they're not able to start there, okay? But as you are also thinking about other values or add-ins to your, your salary, some things that we don't think about that actually kind of quote unquote costs um, in terms of um, add-in benefits are, you know, other jobs that you've received or how long you've been looking for a job or the experiences that you gain or your promotion potential, right? Um, Opportunities to go back to school. Some some companies, you know, do offer incentives, or um, they'll pay you to go to school, or networking opportunities. So sometimes, even if a job is close to your resistance point, there can be um, some reasons why you still might take that job, especially if those extra benefits, right, um, can outweigh sort of. Um, that lower end of the salary that you that you need because of the opportunities that can come in the future. But again, that's gonna be a personal decision um, for yourself to set that resistance point. Um, you gotta look again at that salary range, the job posting and your experience and skill sets, okay? Now here's one thing that we oftentimes forget about in salary negotiation, and that's the to factoring in the value of benefits, okay? Benefits are actually an important part of the compensation package and can be negotiated. Um, you should be negotiating for other items in your compensation packages, especially if your employer cannot meet your target salary, okay? So if they can't meet that median point that you started as your anchor, um, another thing, you wanna really raise the, the awareness of benefits. Well, what benefits you know, do you offer? 
And because those can often have some additional wiggle room for negotiation, especially if that salary is teetering close to your resistance points, um, the benefits can sometimes outweigh that and actually give you a lot more um, add-ins. So some benefits, you know, we think of the typical things like health insurance or vacation, accrual, um, they're usually standard for most employees. Um, but, you know, rather, rather than um, asking for more of everything, also, you know, when it comes to things here, focus on what you might actually be able to get, you know, um, to prioritize some of these benefits. And here's some other options, you know, like family leave, medical leave, flex time, remote. I mean, this, they don't even have this up here on there, you know, working remotely or hybrid, you know, um, professional development funds. This one's not up here either, but I know it's huge here at <laughs> IU parking, right? Parking, or maybe something with, um, you know, maybe health care, health memberships, like at the YMCA or something like that. Moving expenses, are they willing to, to relocate you someplace, right? Um, stock options, all those kind of things. All those things can be negotiated, okay? Um, so what are some things that would make a salary offer or a compensation package more enticing for you? Have you ever thought about that? Like, what else are you looking for other than just like sort of the standard 401k and some health insurance, you know? Um, is it student loan assistance? You know, all those kind of things. And salary.com can actually help um, show you the monetary value of some benefits that a job might have in a certain location. But you really should talk to people in your industry or field if you're able to and ask them what benefits are typically offered. You know, in particular, if you can find out what benefits are particularly offered at that company, and maybe it's even just as easy as going to their, the company's website and looking at their HR um, webpage. Um, but talk to people who work at the company where you're interviewing. Consider what's valuable to you and what you should negotiate for other than just your salary, right? So when you're at home, use all these steps that we just learned to research and to benchmark your salary and your benefits for your specific job title and location. You got to do your research as you prepare for your pitch. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I know I started off this, this workshop talking about your emotions and what does it feel like and all these kind of things. Negotiation at the end of the day is actually pretty objective, right? You can use the data to really back up your pitch to feel really confident and to know um, what is worthy of um, of being asked for, right? And again, just to reiterate about benefits too, it's really a good idea to prioritize your benefits according to which ones you really, really want, okay? And other ones that would be nice, but not a deal breaker. So like if remote work is really important to you, put that at the top of the list to talk about, you know? Maybe if you would love to work one day a week, maybe you start by saying, I would love to work two days a week <laughs> and see what you can start and see how you can negotiate with your, with your um, potential boss, right? Then you have a list when you, when you um, prioritize your benefits, you also have a list that coordinates with your top, top and top values, right? And so as you finally get that final compensation package, you're going to feel really even extra unhappy about what you've asked. All right, here we go. This is the bread and butter, right? Know your strategy. So up to this point, we have discussed strategies and tools of how to be that objective, right? Research-based um, sort of understanding what your ta target salary ranges are and what your resistance points are and creating your budgets and um, benefits that you can negotiate during negotiations. But for the rest of this workshop, we're gonna focus on ways to become highly strategic and highly persuasive, okay? So creating a negotiation strategy requires you to take objective data and create value statements you prepared and to use them strategically, okay? So this is what I mean by this. During your negotiation, you should have notes in front of you as you follow up with the employer, including a prioritized list of what you wanna negotiate for and in what order, okay? You gotta remain positive and flexible as this is gonna allow your employer to better um, engage with you, okay? Your flexibility will help you listen and then advocate for yourself, 
sometimes like when we're in these highly emotionally charged, like conversations, I don't know about you, but like, I totally forget <laughs> like what in the world am I even saying, you know? So remain positive and flexible, have your notes with you. And remember that negotiation of this opportunity, it's not a confrontation or a battle. This is a conversation. And as the conversation continues, you're gonna increasingly learn more about what your employer needs and wants. And if you listen carefully, you can build on every exchange. And as you remain flexible, you can move forward with your target, right? Um, here's, a, here's a caution though, don't get too personal, right? Be careful of oversharing. Your employer doesn't care that you have student loans to pay off or that you're financially supporting you know, somebody in your life um, or that you're in credit card debt. Your salary is gonna be based on your capability to get the job done, the company's budget, the market rates for your job and your ability to successfully negotiate for a higher salary, okay? Um, anticipate all of your employer's reactions and, and responses ahead of time. That way you're already gonna have your own responses prepared. And that's part of what this workshop is, is all about, right? Helping you to sort of anticipate um, how a, an employer typically goes through a salary negotiation process. Um, just like you've spent lots and lots of time preparing for that interview, sort of thinking about what are those typical questions that they're going to ask? How am I going to sort of articulate the values and the skill sets and the, and the star, you know, um, strategies of how to answer those questions? Think about what they're going to ask or how they're going to respond to a salary negotiation and pre be prepared in the same way. And finally, oftentimes employers find the hiring process difficult and time consuming. And if they've chosen you, you got to remember they actually want you and they want to make it work, right? They want to find common ground. Um, and like I said before, it's not a battle, right? They're for you, they want, they want, they've brought you in and they really want to sort of make a deal. So you've got several conversations before concluding the negotiation as each party considers requests and offers and counter offers going back and forth. So again, it's important to remain positive and flexible. And if you ever get to a point where you feel like you need time, to consider an offer, um, you should always feel free to ask for it, right? There's always time, um, especially if your employer, like I said before, has brought you through the whole recruiting and interview process. They've spent a lot of time and probably some money um, on you already, and they want, um, they want it to be a good fit for not only them, but for you as well. So your negotiation strategy can differ depending on where you're looking for a new job or if you're preparing to ask for a raise or a promotion. So salary negotiation can, depends on if you've already been in the company for a while, but in today's workshop, we're really gonna cover preparing to negotiate for that new job offer. So if you're new in a company or you're just getting out of school or whatever, this is how you um, could typically go about it, okay? So this is the life cycle of that job. So you seek a job, apply an interview, negotiate and accept, earn a raise or promotion, and then you go back, um, negotiate and accept again. So we're gonna start here first with um, the first point in that salary negotiation of what typically happens um, when somebody has offered you the job, okay? Now it's important to do your best to avoid discussing your salary or negotiating salaries until you've actually received a job offer, okay? Did you hear me say that? <laughs> um, you do not want to discuss salaries or negotiate until you actually have the job offer in hand. Okay, so during the interview or even in the application stage, you might be asked about your salary history or salary expectations. Here's the thing, you want to deflect those questions, okay, until you have an offer. So you wanna make it clear that you want to learn more, okay, about the job before you share your salary expectations and that, you, uh, and that your requirements are negotiable and that it depends on the salary offered and the benefit packages that, you know, is presented at the time, right? So, so again, let, you know, I'll just walk you through something here. So um, let's practice deflecting these types of questions, right? If an interview says, so, you know, what are your salary expectations for this role? You could deflect by saying something like, well, I'd rather talk about this after I've received the job offer, or um, I'd like to see if I'm a good fit first before we discuss the salary. Or what do you usually pay for somebody in this position? And all of those questions, right? Especially in that third one, you're deflecting it. You're pushing it back on them, right? What do you, you, what do you usually pay for somebody in this position? Um, another one would be like, 
I'd like to learn more about this role before I set my salary expectations. As we move forward in the interview process, I'd hope and expect that my salary would line up with market rates for similar positions in this area. Very reasonable, right? Um, if the interview, if you, if the interviewer asks, you know, can you share your salary history with me? How would you respond? Um, you know, sometimes uh, appropriate ways to respond would be something like, well, you know, this position is not exactly the same as my last job. So let's discuss what my responsibilities would be here and then determine a fair salary for this job. You see how we're constantly like pushing that, that question away, right? You're not trying to be negative. You're not trying to be like hostile about it, but you're simply saying, this isn't the time. This is not the time to do that yet. Or another way you could say is, you know, I appreciate it if you could make me an offer based on whatever you have budgeted for in this position and we can go from there, you know? Or even you can even feel as bold to say, I'm not really comfortable with revealing that information, but I'm interested in discussing some of the other ways I can help the company, okay? So um, oftentimes, you know, it's important also to know pay equity laws. Okay, so because some cities and some states actually prohibit um, interviewing teams from asking someone's salary history. So make sure you research your local pay equity law prior to going into an interview to see if they can even ask those kind of things. And that changes, you know, that, that's different from place to place. But if you've tried and you've tried and you've tried to deflect <laughs> um, and you're still, and you're not able to deflect anymore, right? try to get your employer to share their target range first, right? So well, what do you typically offer someone in this role, okay? Um, and if you can convince your employer to share their, their salary offer first, then that's gonna really set you up well for the next phase of, of negotiation, right? Um, when and if you share your own salary requirements, provide again, that target salary range that you've, that you've already done your research, that you've come um, prepared and ready for, and emphasize that your salary expectations are negotiable, right? Flexible, positive. We're in this together, okay? Um, and they're based on data that's comparable for positions in your location. Does that make sense? Um, if you find that your salary requirements um, were too low, right? You can bring that up too. So like, what if you kind of like, they said something and then you're like in the middle of the meeting being like, oh man, like, this is like $10,000 less than what I initially thought. You know what I mean? Way off the base. Um, or if you accidentally said something first about what your range was, and then they came up and said it was much higher than that. You can always say at any point you are in the driver's seat. You could say something like, well, now that I've learned more about this position, my salary requirements have changed and then provide a new salary range. Okay. Um, so I would love us to practice this a little bit in our breakout rooms, okay? Um, so again, what I'm gonna do is I, we're gonna put you into breakout rooms and Tracy, I'll try really hard to keep you in there a little bit longer so you can actually practice these things. Um, but I want one of you to be the employer and the other to be the employee, okay? Well, or I guess the interviewer and the interviewee and, um, Pretend that you're in an interview, okay? And I'm gonna um, copy and paste some stuff that I'll put in um, to the broadcast area um, that can be your script that you can use to sort of simulate this deflection. And then when you're finished, um, try switching uh, the roles and try again. So the interviewer can ask, start off by saying, could you share your salary history with me? Okay, so that's that's the first thing the interviewer is going to start with. Can you share your salary history with me? And then you as the interviewee, how are you going to respond? How are you going to deflect? Okay, what that's going to be like. So um, Haley, if you want to send folks, that would be great. They're open so everyone can join them now. Thank you. I'm gonna have to stop sharing my screen real quick. There should be two people in all of them. Okay.
Oh shoot, there's not enough space. Is there a way that I could put stuff in the chat that goes to everybody or not really? Yes, um, but it's, you click the more button and then the breakout room button and then the bottom broadcast message to all. And then you can put your message in there and then it'll go to everyone. Okay. I'm just actually, I'm just gonna send that to you. And then can you do that for me? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Okay. Hi, Robin. I'm Rachel. I'm the host of this workshop. I'm glad you're here. We're in breakout rooms right now. I just assigned her oh, to another you. one. So I think Perfect. I just took her a second after she, I think her like, like message. That's funny. I sent those out. So they should like read them. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then also before you close them, I can send like you have like a minute or two left even before we like close them. Or like oh, we can perfect. be like you can start wrapping up. Perfect. So Thank they get a little bit more of a warning. Thank you. Good idea. I'm like so hot. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like writing down all my notes and like, oh, this is so good. Oh, good. <laughs> Especially like the budget stuff is hard. Like, I know for me to like, so I don't have like stable income. Like, I have like yeah. campus shops, but also, yeah, nothing like, I don't have very many like costs. Yeah. Associated right. with living. So, like, I know that I'll like need to mm -hmm. budget in the future. I'd also never heard of like the 50, 20, 30, and that's like really easy and like simplified so sometimes I feel yeah. like it's like daunting yeah I and mean, I think sometimes too it's like you know if you have any debt sometimes that's even a place to start mm -hmm. too to say well I also know I want to save so like <laughs> how much you know how much can I put towards my debt and how much do I want to save and yeah. work yourself sort of reverse engineer yourself back from there but yeah it's always a moving target isn't it I know yeah. Especially like moving to like Chicago from like Indianapolis, you know, those yeah, are some big difference, and, you know, yeah. but hopefully yeah. you'll also be paid more of the two. Yeah. No, the pay, because I had some offers in Indy and I was like, oh, well, I could live at home and then like commute like to the yeah. north side and do those. But then I'm like, or get paid literally the double the amount and be in Chicago and there I'm going to live with family too. So. I'll also mm -hmm. like save on that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you want to put a message for like one more minute? Yeah. Okay. Say switch if you haven't. Okay. 
I told them to make sure to switch roles. And I'll be closing in a few. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so do you think towards the end here, like we can have another type of opportunity for them to sort of like negotiate from start to finish? Do you think that would be helpful or yeah. not really? Okay. So then maybe we should bring them back now. Do I just push close rooms? Yep. Okay. It's like I do the sum, but then I don't do it enough to feel 100% yeah. confident. <laughs> I'm in a sorority, so we did like Zoom recruitment, so. Mm. feel real good about the breakout rooms <laughs> yeah you do because we had to be like move here move here oh my gosh yeah and for that we'd have like 50 breakout rooms it was crazy oh my gosh right am I gonna know when people are all back yeah they'll gosh, start I popping think... in I think they're just finishing their conversations okay and at in 20 seconds it'll kick them out okay so I think they just like talking because normally they'll just start coming back early if they're like already finished. Okay. Good. All right, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. All right, for those of you who participated in this, what was it like to deflect? Does anybody want to unmute themselves and share with the group? What did it feel like to sort of deflect that salary question? Anybody want to share? Hey, Rachel. Yeah, um, hey. Hi, this is Shalayu. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Kristen and um, if you wouldn't have brought this up, um, I didn't even know that this could be a thing during an interview, just discussing or negotiating salary. Um, so if it were not to be discussed right now, probably I would have just been struck by that question and I didn't know what to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well good so you knew now that you can actually you can actually use your voice and mm -hmm. and state you know put it back on them right yeah um, yeah by yourself yeah, it, was, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was uh nice discussing it with Kristen and good. she kind of helped me out saying uh the same way like with the question that came up mm -hmm. what are your expectations for salary about mm -hmm. from this job and then uh, she helped me out and as she said that you awesome. can say that you can discuss it after yep. uh, you know the job role like you said absolutely so absolutely putting this out <laughs> yeah no I'm so great I'm so great yeah no problem um I'm so you know and I think I think you bring up a really great point is that sometimes you know we don't know what we don't know you know, mm -hmm. we think uh, we think that just because they asked us the question, we have to give them an answer, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that's not always the case. Now, sometimes I will say, sometimes we might encounter online application forms that require you to share your salary history or desired salary. Um, okay. And there's not really a clear method for how to handle this. Um, we do recommend that you can, if you can leave them blank or write a zero or NA, um, mm -hmm. But if the field requires a figure, then just put down your target salary or your target salary range that gives you that that space. Um, even if you have to share a number, you can always say in that negotiation process that your expectations have changed as you've gained a better understanding of your role, your company and that full package. Right. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. That was, was thank really you. helpful. Uh, and I also wanted to say one more thing. Sure. I work here at IU uh -huh. and I discussed this with Kristen too. Uh, when I started with my uh, first time, when I started with IU, I didn't know that we could negotiate salaries at university mm -hmm. levels too, because they have predetermined salary grades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I didn't know that was a thing too. Um, and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, we just happened to talk about this and she said, of course, you can mm -hmm. negotiate your salary if you're applying for jobs within universities. 
Yeah. So I just wanted to say it out just in case there's somebody Absolutely. who's saying the same boat. <laughs> Absolutely. You're sharing your wisdom with everyone else. I really appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. You know, especially here at IU or other educational sort of, op, you know, sometimes there's um, sort of a set schedule. It's like, this is what it is. Take it or leave it, you know, or at least that's how it feels. The reality is, is usually there's a little bit of wiggle room, right? Um, and even if there's not, well, and I will say here at IU, every school, every department, every, you know, everyone sort of has their own budget and their sort of own different way of negotiating or not, or what that, what that room looks like. Um, but don't forget about the benefits, right? We oftentimes don't think about that. And especially with educational institutions, negotiating for professional development, that could be huge, right? Or professional dues or, um, conference, you know, going to conferences, that's professional development, parking, parking would be great. You know, I mean, some of those other things that we, that we typically don't think about um, that can still add up and, and be a real cost um, add on for sure. All right. There's a question in here that says, what do you suggest when an online application requests your salary history for past jobs you've held? Oof. You know, I mean, that's, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, you know, if you can't just put that zero or NA um, or say, you know, uh, I, I guess you just have to sort of be honest about that, um, you know, because we don't want to lie or do anything like sort of that would be inappropriate on, an, on a job application. But that those are some those are tricky, you know, um, but I think we can still be able to say um, that when you're in that job negotiation process, that it doesn't have to be based on your previous salary. You can say, you know, because of my skill sets, what I bring, those values that, you know, the add in values that you bring um, and the, the market rate going for this particular job that you're offering to me, this is the expected salary range that I'm, that I'm wanting. Um, yeah, great question though. All right, let's keep moving on here. So you've got the job. They've given you the job. They've given you the contract. Now what? Okay. How do you respond to this offer persuasively? Okay. So once you've received an offer, the negotiation process has begun. Up to this point, we've deflected. We've been in the interview process. We're like, we're not really want to talk about that now, but you've gotten this actual offer. This is why it's critical to prepare and to practice your response ahead of time, which is what we've prepared you for up to this point. Because when you receive your job offer, you should receive the starting salary number that they're offering, okay? If not, ask what that starting salary is along with the benefits package. Get everything in writing so you can take your time to review it, okay? Listen carefully, pause, reflect. Do not, as much as you want to, respond immediately, no matter what the offer is. If it's a million dollars, say, thank you so much for this offer. I'd like, a, I'd like some time to look it over, <laughs> okay? Um, at this point, you can start negotiating right away or um, after you have some time to think about it or thank them and ask them for you know, um, additional time to consider. You might wanna also ask for more information if you need that about you know, benefits or healthcare costs or retirement, um, things like that. If you get an offer at or above your target range because you know what your target range is, right? That that sort of what you're really hoping for, that's that anchor point, that low number, and you're stretching it forward up to 20%. Um, and if it's somewhere in there or above, congratulations. You should look over the overall package. And then that's when you look at those benefits, right? And you decide whether or not you want to um, negotiate further on any of those things. Um, now, it is always generally usually expected, especially in the corporate world, that there that you will bring something back to the table, right? That it's not just like, okay, sounds great, that you'll actually bring something back. I mean, that shows a little bit of gumption. That shows a little bit of like, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm worth it, right? So um, you want to make sure that you can clearly spell out the value, however, of what you're bringing in, you know, because of X, because I've done X, Y, and Z, um, this is why I feel like um, this is um, a warranted offer. If you get an offer that's below your target salary, you should definitely attempt to negotiate upwards, okay? So more, consider what benefits might bridge those gaps to make that offer more acceptable. So, you know, if, if you're looking at that, that benefits in there, it's, it's a huge, which is why a lot of people love to work at IU, let's just be real, right? Um, 
historically, the salaries generally um, maybe are a little bit more on the lighter end, but they have some really great health health back, you know, packages or 10% um, with the retirement packages is fantastic. So when you look here at the benefits, um, sometimes that can sort of bump up sort of that add-in value that you want to, to make that offer more acceptable. But in these situations, if you cannot negotiate above your resistance point, that point that where you're saying, I got to walk away, then you might really need to consider whether or not this job is a realistic fit for you to be able to meet your needs. And the reality is, is because um, when we think about values, that's the emotional currency of our work. You know, right now we're talking about fiscal, um, fiscal sort of needs right here, but uh, understanding our values, that's the emotional currency. So if we're in a job that we're constantly feeling like, you know, we're being undervalued, we're being underpaid, that is going to grate at us over time. And it's probably gonna to lead to us feeling burnt out. Um, and then we'll end up probably transitioning out of that job um, down the line. So make sure that you're speaking up and saying what you need. All right, so let's talk about being persuasive. Anticipating how your employer will react and preparing persuasive you know, responses, it's really important for negotiation and the best way to prepare and practice your strategy. So just like you're preparing for your interview, it's, it's just as important to prepare for the salary negotiation piece. Anticipate employer objections, okay? Which is kind of a weird way to think about it, but we want you to anticipate employer objections by brainstorming three to five different ways that the employer might respond to you during a negotiation, right? Then think about your value statements and what you can bring to this job and the information that you gathered in your research to prepare you for talking points for each of, their, of the potential responses to counteract um, their objections, right? Remember that the decision makers have actually already offered you the job, all right? They have offered you the job, they want you. You've gotta to continue to remind yourself that. They want me, they've given me this job. Um, this is not a battle, this is a conversation, right? So remind yourself of that why during this negotiation practice. Um, so let's, I want us to practice this actually, okay? And I want us to sort of spend some time in breakout rooms here in a little bit, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example about what I'm looking for for you all to practice. Um, so let's say you get an offer that's below your target and let's just say with that public relations example that we gave before is $50,000 a year, okay? You get offered 45, okay? So you remember your 50,000, that, that was your median, that was the, um, I should say, that was your target salary, which is your anchor, right? You were actually, you offered that range between 50 and 55 and they're coming in at 45. Hmm, that doesn't feel great, right? But again, conversation, we don't wanna cut off, we don't wanna cut off communication. So you could start off by saying something like, I am thrilled to receive an offer and excited about the possibility of joining your team. Um, thank you so much. As I reviewed this offer, I was actually hoping there was some flexibility on my salary, given my qualifications and the work in my work experience. Um, so what flexibility do you have? And then maybe the employer comes back and says, how about 48,000? And you're like, um, I mean, you wouldn't technically like, you know, make that sound. But then you could refer back to your research, okay? Because you've done your research, because you have an informed, objective, research-based salary range, okay, of what's market value, not just some emotional number, okay? You can refer back to your research and one or two of your value statements by saying, well, based on my research of similar positions in this area and my related experience, I was thinking 50 to $55,000 a, a year. Um, and then you can go back and forth negotiating from there um, about what would feel most comfortable for you of what you're landing on. So I want to, I hope that makes sense, okay? So that's sort of what I want you all to, in these breakout rooms, to go back and forth in, okay? I want one of you to be the employer, and again, the other em the employee, and then you're gonna switch. Um, and let's use similar numbers, all right? Um, with your employee's target range, as the employee, your target range is between 50 and 55 but you're gonna be offered 45,000 to begin, okay? And sort of see where that conversation goes. Um, and then the employer is going to sort of do the same thing and then switch, okay? Remember all the things that you've learned so far in this workshop to find a number that feels great for you, okay? Does anybody have any questions?
about that. All right. So let's go into our breakout rooms. They're open now. Okay, awesome. I had to move. Thank you. We're losing people. <laughs> I think um, when they come back, I'll send the event eval again so people can get it as they leave. Thank you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down to seven now. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my screen because if I'm having them do this.
would you mind sending in another message? No problem. Switch thing. What did you want it to say to switch? Yeah, I would just say we'll be finishing up here in a couple minutes. It's something like that, whatever. Whatever you said last time was perfect. All right, I think we're just waiting on a few more people to finish up and then we'll finish up here. You guys are doing a great job hanging into this almost two hour long workshop. All right, it will close in eight seconds. So we'll have everyone back here in just a second. All right. Well, welcome back to everyone. Um, so you had an opportunity to sort of get in there, test things out, being persuasive. Um, does anybody want to debrief with us? How'd that feel? Anybody, anybody? Or throw a word in the chat if you don't want to talk, it's totally fine. Um, in our group, we ended up when we got the offer that we thanked them and said we would, you know, look forward to receiving the offer in the email and discussing, we kind of moved it into email. So it was like, thank you for the offer. We're excited. Um, and then having email sort of as the opportunity to look over yeah. the, the full offer and, and write back and say, you know, I'm excited and have that conversation of here's what I'd like to be able to take this offer. Absolutely, absolutely great. Great way to contextualize that. That was really smart. Awesome, anybody else? One thing we talked about was going back to like benefits and then mm -hmm. um, ranking benefits and seeing like what's most important for like lifestyle and such yeah. and how, I mean, cause it, we switched it transitioned from role playing to just conversations. Yeah, sure. Um, but about how um getting benefits that help your lifestyle is different than like a monetary value. Um yeah. and how those should be equally as like equally considered or right put on a scale to consider. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Which is a fantastic sort of lead in to this. I was hoping that you all remembered about the benefits too. So Katie and your and your teammate, um, double gold star. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, absolutely. We don't want to forget about those negotiating those benefits, right? Because um, that is a fantastic way to, to maximize your value during the negotiation. And especially, you know, to sort of pump up any type of a um, of a salary package that was offered. So way to go. Um, Make sure you guys write that down on your notes um, for sure. Like, do not forget about a benefit about the benefits of the salary negotiations for sure. Um, so, to conclude the negotiation again, just want to reiterate here real quick that you want to get everything in writing. Okay, 
and read everything carefully before signing it to make sure that everything you discussed is included, especially if you're going back and forth and back and forth with counter offers and negotiations. Once you get that final contract um, or offer that's written down, make sure that you read it with a fine tooth comb to make sure that, you know, if you did talk about um, working remotely, um, that that's written in there or the professional development funds that that's in there. Or sometimes, you know, it's like after six months, we're going to review and, you know, um, and then maybe it's bumping it up to X amount of, of money. Make sure that you get all of those things in writing. Okay. And also don't forget to thank your new employer and reiterate again, your excitement for this new role. Okay. You have gone through the job um, search process. You have gone through the interview process. You've gone through the negotiation process. Um, and you've landed the job. So um, make sure you don't forget about that in the process, that this is something that you wanted, that you desired all along the way, and to thank your new employer for, for working with you too. Um, now, can negotiations backfire? I remember sort of, again, going back to one of the first comments that we made about like, you know, I feel like when we think about salary negotiation, we oftentimes feel like we're walking on eggshells, you know, can negotiating backfire? Well, in most cases, your negotiation will proceed positively, okay? I do want to say that uh, out of the gate here. However, research shows that there are and there can be stereotypes that women face in the workplace um, that play into why women don't negotiate as often as men. Have you ever heard of the double bind? Um, the double bind is about when roles that women are allowed, quote unquote, allowed to play in societies, right? Uh, women receive conflicting demands around behavior expectations, especially at work. You know, women often have two choices, either to be respected or to be liked. Um, and likable women are seen as incompetent, right? And may not be able to give and stretch assignments. So it's like, well, do I double down um, and seem really, um, you know, competent and able to get stuff done or do seem likable, which then sort of, you know, makes me seem less competent. When women step outside their cultural expectations and are seen as assertive or advocate for themselves in negotiations, sometimes it's, they're seen as unlikable. It's unfair, absolutely, but it is a reality. You're supposed to negotiate, right? That's what, that's what men do. That's what the men are, um, they're rewarded for. But when women sometimes negotiate, they're seen as being too assertive um, when they're advocating for themselves. So that's very unfair, but you're also working against negative stereotypes. So sometimes it's important to, to um, um, just, just state that up front. But overall, you need to trust your gut, that you're experienced enough to know when you're risking your job, your career, or your future. And most of the time you're not, right? But if it gets to a point where your, your gut, your intuition is saying, you know, yeah, this is feeling like a little bit too much, too hard, too fast. Um, if you sense that conversation is going in any way that feels risky, you can back off, right? You can just stop the discussion at any point in time, okay? So again, we, um, the, the last step in the negotiation practice is just, in, is just practice, 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 right? Um, practice makes perfect. So don't be afraid to grab a friend and practice when you're home. Um, talk it out with your dog. Um, this kind of practice can really help make you calm and more controlled uh, as you start the negotiation in real life to feel um, that you've, you've worked it out. Just like, you know, we prepare so much for the interviews, right? We don't prepare as much for the salary negotiation. And you know, stating our values, understanding what we bring to the table um, and doing, understanding how to do that research and know how to make our budgets and know how to deflect um, and, and understand what benefits really are important to us just gives us so much more confidence. So again, here in summary, these are the four salary negotiation steps that we work through today. Uh, we've covered a lot, right? Step one is to know your value. Step two is to know your target salary and benefits. Um, salary.com, again, that's a great website to use to find that um, target industry targeted um, research. Step three, know your strategy, know how to deflect, um, know how to articulate your value, know how to set that salary range and stretch it upwards. Um, and then just gotta just keep practice, 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 right? All right, so these last few moments here, did you have an aha moment? Um, and or what's one thing that you're going to do 
um, to practice what you've learned today? What's one thing that you want to take with you, um, as you as you move forward? Who's willing to share? Yeah, Caitlin says learning how to deflect questions. Awesome. Giving yourself the permission to, to deflect the question, to turn it around, put it back on them. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Sounds like it was a popular answer. All right. Well, good. Well, this is the last um, slide here that I have in terms of um, there's a QR code. So if, if you haven't, um, Clicked on the link that Haley sent in the chat for our survey. There's a QR code you can you can get out your phones and take a quick picture of it, and it'll take you to a survey. So we can capture um, to make sure that we were hitting the mark that we were looking for this workshop. But in conclusion, I do want you to know that um, I know that you want a job, and you may be inclined to take anything that's offered to you. But I do want you to stop, or at least slow down and pause. And in whatever job or um, or if you're in a current job of a raise you're offered, ask for it to be fair and equitable, right? We never, we can never close this gender pay gap if we don't ask what's fair and just. So please know that I am wishing you the best of luck and thank you so much for taking the time today to choose our Smart Start Salary Negotiation Workshop with the CWIT Summit um, 22. So I really appreciate the time and energy and effort that you took to get here today and to be an active participant. And um, I hope it was everything that you anticipated it would be. So be in touch and reach out if you need anything. But um, yeah, hope you have a good job and best of luck to you in the future. Thank you, Rachel. It's great to meet you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you too. Good luck with everything, Haley. I hope it all goes well for you. And yeah, I'll be cheering from you from afar as you make your decisions and yeah, go into your internship. It's so exciting. Okay, I'm also going to stop the recording too.